Hi guys, Roxanne here from Tiny Home Living. Well, it's a cloudy, warm day, but uh, we got a lot of rain the last couple of days and we sure are happy to have that. But um, I, we've got a lot of exciting things to share with you today. But before I do, I just want to ask you to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video with your family and friends. Can't wait to show you what's happening around the homestead. Look at this. The robins already have a new nest in the new barn <laughs> in the wall. So we're, that's just inside the door. We're just going to make sure that... Uh, we don't disturb the nest and we'll uh, leave the door open a bit so then Robin can get in and out once the roof and everything's on. So Chris has got the lookouts cut in the last truss. So the two by fours, four feet long, will go into the, tie into the second truss and then stick out this way two feet to uh, create a two foot overhang and then the fascia will go on those. So what we're going to try and attempt, not today, is to lift the bottom of this up with the bucket of the tractor. I'll pull on the rope and see if we can get it up onto the wall there. We also got the uh, roof ordered yesterday, black uh, steel roofing. So that's going to look super cute. My red, black and white pattern continued. I'm going to do the red barn, white trim with the black roof. So cute. We have had a couple of days of really solid, heavy rain, and look at this. Cherries. I thought that the number of blossoms indicated. Now look at, they're just popping everywhere that there's a blossom, just like the peppers, the jalapenos. I have to check on those too. Um, there's just cherries everywhere on this little tree. And this one has exploded over last year. Oh my goodness, look at the clumps of apples, guys. Is like where where there were clumps of blossoms, there are clumps of apples. Now keep in mind I didn't get a single apple off this tree last year. And I was so disappointed. Look at them going all the way out the branches. Just bunches and bunches of apples. So look at even down here on this lower branch, this little tuft. This is amazing. This is the mangy, mangy tree, but it's, it's still got clumps of blossoms. So I did uh, prune this one a little bit the other day and I might have to do like a total massacre on this one. But um, this cherry tree here too is the biggest one and it has uh, cherries coming on it too. So it had lots of blossoms as well. Now this one here is the tree that was the only tree that got apples last year had 10 apples and I didn't actually get any of them. And look at the clumps of apples down here. Like there's more, there's like 10 apples here and that's what I got off the whole tree last year. So there, just loaded, absolutely loaded with apples this year. I am so excited. My goodness. Let's go check the Battleford tree. That's one of the mangiest ones too. Well, let's check the slingshot first. This rain is gonna... I should go out and check the garden too, yeah. Just clumps. Just clumps and clumps of apples on these trees this year. It's gonna be loaded. And I think these are three... Well, this is the third year that we've had these trees. Only, I think it's only the second year for this one, the Battleford one. Now this one is later, so I don't see... Well, yeah, there might be some coming there. But this one was much later than the others. This is the cherry tree that Chris thought was dead. Obviously, it's absolutely loaded with blossoms too. This is exciting because these, this cherry tree this one and this one um, are all sour cherry, so that's what you need to make pies. And isn't that a priority? I think I'm going to be getting crab apples too, which is nice. Lots of them too. It's drizzling out right now, but uh, Ruby and the babies don't seem to mind. 
which is nice. They've got lots of space. She did take them in under that uh, covered area when it was uh, raining heavier. My goodness, they're getting big. Um, I looked at a book yesterday and it's, it showed pictures of them at different weeks and at six weeks they're almost like adult sized. Boy, they sure like that. They're, they're using the little perch and the angled one. Um, look at this. Look at the onions, the onion row. Where's my finger? Right here, I think. Yep, that's the onion row. Not sure about the other stuff, but again, this rain is going to be absolutely fantastic for this garden. And you can see where I stopped. I ran out of onions and then added the yellow ones. So that's going to be really good. This rain will be good to get those yellow ones caught up. Another thing with the timing, um, these ones will be able to come out with the flock, I think, in a couple of weeks, and that's right about when, well, a week after that is when Hazel's chicks will hatch if she stays on the nest. Why don't we go check on Hazel? Hi, sweetie. Now, Chris put a couple more eggs under her, so we have absolutely no idea now how many are under her. I tucked one under her wing on this side. Um, she's got herself all fluffed up. Look, her tail's way out the back because she's got herself so fluffed up. So, um, I think the 4th of July, my birthday, is when her eggs are supposed to hatch. And I wanted to go to the stampede this year, but I guess I'll have to stay home, won't I? We wouldn't want to miss that. No. So we've got the cardboard in there. She's not, she's being protected from the baby stealers. Well, this is the favorite nest, that's the problem. I think we're gonna wait till tomorrow and then move her down to the end like we did with Ruby and then we'll block it off so she's not bothered. But I want her to have, you know, maybe another day sitting on them before I move her because I don't want her to abandon the nest. So what do you think, Hazel? Hmm? I'm probably going to keep calling you Ruby now, aren't I? And I had threatened Hazel with the soup pot because I thought she was the one eating eggs. So I think she must have decided to hatch some chicks to redeem herself and save herself from the soup pot. Yes. What a clever girl. Yes. I brought uh, Hazel some grapes now. She's had Skip the Dishes come by with her feed. Now grapes just filled up her water. She had drank all her water. Oh, look at you. You're so fluffy. Yes. Are you doing this just because you saw Ruby getting Skip the Dishes? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're nice and warm, aren't they? They're nice and warm. Good girl, fluff yourself up. Yes. Oh, that's yummy. Yeah. Yeah. I think you got jealous because you saw Ruby getting treats delivered. Yeah. Yummy. Mm -hmm. What, you don't want me to stare at you while you're eating? Okay, let's see what, oh look at the whole gang is here. All the chicks are looking at the other hens now. Didn't get any treats. Oh. Ruby's looking for treats too. Yeah. Uh oh, poor Ruby. Maybe I'll have to go pick her some clover. These chickens have five acres and they're running to see if somebody got a morsel of something. Good heavens. Ruby's already got the babies on high alert because she can see us picking. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Look, Ruby. Come get some clover. Here, sweetie. Ruby! Ruby! Come on, sweetie! Look! Look! Why, oh, you silly chicken? You silly chicken, look! 
Come on, Ruby. <laughs> Maybe she'll see it. Yeah, see the noise? <laughs> when you look at them from above, you can sure see the difference in size. Who's missing? Two, four, six, eight. There he comes. Pulling up the rear. The little ones. From here you can see how different the feathers are. Apparently there's some way to tell by their feathers when they're brand new. Whether they're male or female. Not likely that I could do it, but babies are enjoying it. Close her. <laughs> here she goes. She's gonna cover them in. Yeah, you know, as soon as she does that they start kicking and scratching. A couple of them still have just tiny little tail feathers. This one here by the fence must be the youngest. That one over there. I had the door ajar because it was so hot in here. Rusty was actually standing in here in the kitchen on the other side of the door thinks he was being invited in and of course <laughs> she's right there. No, Sadie doesn't want you in her domain. You have five acres. This is Sadie's territory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me the hinky eye. I see ya. So half an hour ago when we were eating it with the sun was and it looked like summer and now <laughs> we've got thunder and uh, some more rain coming but we're gonna um, get some slats here from some skids and start laying out the door for the barn. Got the door hardware yesterday so we want to get that started. A few minutes later and it's summer again. Rain went that way. That's south. So we uh, have got cut the slats that we had Boards were already. Chris has just gone to get the metal cutting blade to get these uh, cut these nails because this is just too hard to pry. We tried that. We're too old. We need three more boards to get the right height, and um, they weren't going to work the measurements if we did them up and down. So we cut them in half instead, so we'd have enough boards. And then we will make a picture frame for this, and then do the X on it as well. Um, to reinforce it. You coming to make sure everything's done right, Rusty? That little chicken's pecking at your neck still. Yeah. That's Betty, I think. Are you Betty? I think so. She's got the only one with black on her beak. Yes, it is. <laughs> I thought it was. Why does this look like it's so far apart? Oh, it must not be. Oh, I see. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's a pretty awesome barn door. And it's free! The entire thing's made from slats from skids. So, we are done for today. Tired out as usual. We did already eat, so we're not tired and hungry this time. But I'm um, really happy with this. Got it done after supper because the clouds cleared. So, we're done for today. We're going to put our feet up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share this video with your family and friends. And we'll see you next time.